Welcome back. It's been 27 years of democracy and it certainly hasn't been boring at all. We've seen hope for a rainbow nation, 10 wasted years and then hope for a new dawn. But in between all of that, we've also seen xenophobic attacks, HIV and AIDS, denialism and euphoria over the soccer and rugby World Cups. But now the country is witnessing the deep rot of corruption through the state capture inquiry and growing inequality, which has worsened by COVID-19. So let's discuss how this has affected democracy and the national psyche with political analyst Amanda Hose. Amanda, thank you so much for your time and joining us today. I mean, when you Google uh, the 27th of April 1994, you're almost bombarded with images, nostalgic images of millions of South Africans queuing to make their very first democratic vote. A lot of hope and optimism. I can imagine that day, um, you know, when people were voting. But I mean, what's the significance of today as South Africans reflect on the past 27 years? Good morning. Yes, Freedom Day is the celebration of the end of that liberation struggle that was fought for so hard uh, by by the, liber the the ANC specifically um, to to liberate this country from uh, colonialism and apartheid. So for us, it is a very important day, and and our freedoms are now protected in a constitution, and specifically in uh, the Bill of Rights. But what we've seen in the past 27 years is a, a slow undermining um, of the constitution and the constitutional order, and specifically the judiciary. Um, so, so we cannot take these rights and freedoms for granted uh, anymore. And I think what, what we see as a consequence of corruption is that uh, we are in a state of political instability, and that instability is going to continue unless we get to grips uh, with corruption. So, you know, the question is that we have to ask ourselves in 2021 is to what extent are we actually able to live the rights and freedoms that were so hard fought for? And with that being said, I mean, what, what do you make, I suppose, of that very same transition, you know, from uh, our democracy to freedom? And you mentioned some of the challenges that South Africa has been inundated with, amongst them being corruption. Was it an easy transition? Some of the challenges that we went through, were they uh, avoidable? Were they unavoidable? Look, um, it, was a, it was a difficult transition and it was a long protected uh, a transition where every stakeholder that was deemed worthy of being part of the negotiation process fought for a, a constitutional order. And this made South Africa a success story in the eyes of the world, where we actually transitioned to democracy without a, a revolution. But the problem is that with any transition, we need to understand how the ruling party that takes power actually governs the country. And I think the one thing that we need to also um, consider is the, the freedom from want. So if you have a political uh, and an economic condition where people are socially excluded and marginalized, where you have very high levels of poverty, which is about the condition for 50% of South Africa's population, and with this huge inequality gap, the biggest inequality gap in the world, mm. um, then those rights and freedoms mean very little for people who cannot access them. So, so this is the problem, is that you have a situation where people are enriching themselves through government um, at the cost of the citizens. And I think we need, we need to ask ourselves, why is it that it's so difficult to come to grips with uh, corruption? Is it about political will? Or are those patronage networks so deeply embedded now in the political system that they are nearly impossible to get rid of? Yeah, and I suppose that's why the step aside issue, particularly affecting the ANC, is such you know, a, a talking point around the country because it talks exactly to that. Why is it so difficult um, for the ruling party to deal decisively with corruption, especially if they talk about uh, sort of stemming out corruption? But you also mentioned COVID-19. We can't have this discussion without making mention of it, especially because the president is commemorating today with the theme, the meaning of uh, freedom under COVID-19. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure you'd agree, Amanda, that some are saying that COVID-19 has even further exposed the inequalities in this country as opposed to pushing all the blame to the pandemic. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, it's exposed the global inequalities as well as the deep inequalities in South Africa. 
And specifically, what we see is the, the neglect of our public health care system. So that those people who are, don't have um, private medicine and have to rely on the public system um, are excluded and, and very often cannot even access it or, or it's in such a state of mismanagement that it's not functioning. Mm. And, and I think what, what we also uh, saw with COVID is the huge burden of care that was uh, put on the shoulders of women. And the theme for this year is Charlotte Nkeke. And I think it's a, a wonderful theme. She was such a wonderful struggle hero, but also somebody who is a role model for what women can achieve. Um, uh, it's especially, you know, uh, during, during a time where women's rights and, and women's liberation was not a priority. Right. So, and, and I think this is the other thing, you know, if you hollow out the state and you have economic uh, dysfunctionality, the people who suffer are the poorest of the poor, of which uh, the, the largest percentage are women and children. So what freedom uh, is that for, for people who live in conditions like that? That's the question, and we leave it there. Thank you so much, Amanda Host, for joining us, talking about the state of freedom in this country.